Okay, so I was going to go ahead and install Windows 7 as a virtual machine so I could do an extension of my uh, Windows 7 password video. So I figured uh, I might as well uh, share the knowledge and, uh, and show you how to install uh, a Windows operating system as a virtual machine. Therefore, you can run Windows within Windows. Uh, for the virtual machine software, I'm going to be running, uh, it's called VMware Workstation and uh, I'll show you where you can get it. We can just open up uh, uh, Firefox and go to Google and just type in VMware and uh, their website should come up here at the top. We'll go ahead and click that and then click downloads. So then you can scroll down until you see uh, desktop and end users computing and as you can see here there's a VMware workstation there's also another option which is called VMware Player. It's uh, it's just a lighter version of, uh, of Workstation. So we'll go ahead and click download product and then we're going to want the one for Windows in this case. We'll click go to downloads and as you can see here it's 491 megabytes. Uh, it's a fairly good sized program. It should take you only a few minutes to download depending on your internet speed. So we'll click download now and you're going to have this box pop up here. Now if, uh, if you're not already have uh, an account you're going to have to register. You can just put in uh, your legit information or, or whatnot. I'll leave that up to you. Uh, once you do that you can just log in and uh, it's clean and easy install and download from there and no other hassles. So I would show you the process of doing that but I do not want to uninstall uh, by my VM whereas I have uh, multiple operating systems already installed and I don't want to lose those. So after you install uh, the VMware workstation you're gonna probably end up on a home screen like this which says you know create a new virtual machine open a virtual machine and then we have a couple other options here. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna click create a new virtual machine and then it's gonna say typical or advanced for, for if this is your first time and uh, you don't have an idea of what you're doing I would recommend just going with typical and then as you can see here we can click install from disk so if we do have the Windows uh, 7, 8 or any other operating system that you may be installing we can just put the CD into the computer and install from there uh, I have the ISO image which I download and I get free from school so I'm going to go ahead and use that as you can just browse and then I have it right here so we can open that. So once that's done we can click next and if you have the serial key you can put it in now uh, I'm gonna do mine later for your uh, serial key, key thieves out there you're not gonna be using my key. Uh, we can go ahead and we can name the computer I'm just gonna name it uh, Miller James my name there and then we'll throw in a quick password once that's done we can say log on automatically if we'd like if not uh, it's up to you. We'll click next and it's going to tell you that you did not enter Windows product and that you're going to manually have to activate Windows once you have it installed. Uh, that or you're going to have that uh, dialog box that, box that pops up saying uh, Windows is, uh, is not genuine. So we can name the virtual machine which is just going to pop up here in the, in the tabs as you can see I have Fedora, CentOS, uh, Kali Linux and stuff like that. So I'm just going to name it Windows 7 Ultimate and I'm going to go ahead and click Next. Now it's going to give you a recommended disk, disk size for um, it's going to give you a recommended disk size for Windows uh, as 60 gigabytes. Uh, seeing that I'm just using Windows 7 for uh, a test operating system and doing a few quick videos uh, I don't need to take up that much room so I'm just going to go with uh, with a minimum 20. Uh, they say that you can run a minimum of 15 but I'm just going to put in 20 just in case I decide to install and test out a couple uh, odd programs. Now you can split the virtual disk into multiple files. Um, splitting the disk may make it easier to move the virtual machine to another computer but I'm not doing that so I'm just going to keep it as one solid, uh, solid file. So I'm going to go ahead and click next and then in here you can just click finish and uh, and let it install or if you uh, if you'd like to 
customize your settings you can go through here uh, memory uh, you can uh, adjust I'm gonna give mine four gigs as uh, my uh, laptop currently has 12 and uh, I should be able to uh, easily uh, sacrifice four gigs for the operating system if your computer only has four gigs I would recommend uh, going with the with the bare minimum setting as your your host operating system also has to run you know the Windows machine uh, the virtual machine too so uh, processors um, you can select the amount of processors you want to give it and the amount of cores in the processor so I have an i7 uh, 8 cores so I can easily give it you know one processor and two cores um, I'm not expecting much performance out of this machine like I said it's just for testing and uh, I'm not going to be using it for everyday uh, tasks now uh, the CD drive uh, once we've installed it uh, we can switch from this ISO image into a physical drive and then your your virtual machine can actually use your CD drive in your physical computer and uh, you can go about installing stuff and doing that uh, for networking we have uh, network address translation selected, so NAT. It's going to share the uh, the host IP's uh, address and uh, and connection. Um, we can isolate it with host only and and different options like that. Uh, when I go to make uh, a few security and hacking videos later on uh, for with networking and stuff like that, I'll be changing these options. But for now, um, you're good to go with uh, the default setting. Uh, you can switch the the USB if you have USB 3.0 you can do that um, I have that so I can select that uh, your sound card you can say uh, you know power on or you can get rid of it and then there's printers and uh, displays if you want to check those out so I'm gonna go ahead and click close and then finish and then what uh, VMware is going to do is it's going to create the disk space and then it's going to go about uh, installing the operating system okay so now that it's almost done creating the disk it's gonna go ahead and uh, and ask us a few more questions here uh, first off it's gonna start booting up the the operating system as if you were installing it on a physical machine so we'll let that go ahead okay so Windows is starting up it's uh, at this process it's going to be copied in the Windows files expanding them and then installing them as you can see in, uh, in just a second here okay alright but first off uh, you may or may not come up with this uh, this option here uh, what this is is it's saying do you want the 32-bit option or do you want the 64-bit uh, unless you know that your hardware is capable of handling a 64-bit uh, operating system as a virtual machine I would recommend going with the 32-bit or if it's your first time installing an operating system in a virtual machine uh, I would go 32-bit when I customized my computer I made sure I had the option with the uh, the hardware and uh, and the BIOS setting that I can I can run 64-bit machines uh, so that's why I'll be selecting that but like I said uh, we'll go ahead and, and select uh, x86 if, uh, if you're not cr sure so like I said previously it's uh, copying in the Windows files it will expand them uh, install features updates and then your uh, your installation will uh, will pretty much be complete okay so now that it's done copying the files we can go ahead and we can give the computer a name so I'm just going to call mine Miller Time and then click next alright so it's going to ask you if you want to use Windows uh, you know recommended settings for auto uh, updates or if you wanted to ask you every time it updates or not update at all uh, I would recommend using the recommended settings and then it's going to ask you if it's your home network work network or public network now the the virtual machine will use your your current internet access from your physical computer so if it's a home network you can go ahead and you can uh, select home if not you can select public or work wherever you plan to use it so it's going to go ahead and configure your internet connection
All right, so once it does that, it's just going to finalize your installation, and uh, you should be good to go from there. All right, and as you can see, it's just uh, going to restart the computer and, uh, you know, c configure your Windows. So once it's done this, it's, uh, it's pretty much going to shut down and restart, and you're good to go. All right, and uh, Windows has rebooted and restarted, so we can put in our password. Windows should start up regularly, and you'll be good to go to use the computer as if, uh, if it was a physical machine. It's going to go ahead and uh, just prep your desktop. boot in. Alright, now that we've uh, booted into the operating system, uh, like I mentioned before, it's going to go ahead and install VMware tools automatically. Uh, if it doesn't do that, you can always go up here on uh, the VMware Workstation, click the VM, and then you can say, uh, instead of cancel, it will say install VMware tools. So it's going to go ahead and do this process and uh, install and then after it's done we can just click next as it's almost completed here. Okay so now that it's installed the, uh, the VMware tools it's going to go ahead and reboot the system again. and. Uh, I think that's the final reboot process and uh, you're good to go. Alright, so your configurations are 100% and now we should be able to log in one final time and the operation or the operating system should be a hundred percent ready to go <clears throat> and uh, that's that so it's uh, it's pretty much the same easy and simple steps as installing an operating system on a normal computer just uh, with the with the few exceptions to the few uh, options at the beginning but other than that you're uh, you're straightforward. Now we can click view here and we can select fit to guest which will expand the operating system so you have a little more room to play in. Uh, from there you can say if you want to go full screen and then to get rid of this taskbar we can go exclusive mode and then now you have your full desktop or laptop uh, monitor uh, just as if you were on your physical computer uh, with no restraints on the side and stuff like that. So that's it, that's the, the steps and everything and I'll see you in the next video.